Where does the honey go in the beehive? Usually around the brood. No, it goes, goes above the brood, right? Oh, well, when they... Yeah. Okay, if you got honey down here, you need brood. Get that and rotate it up to a, a top box. Okay. Okay. Now, the main thing people want beehives for is, I ask them, why do you want the beehives? Everybody says, I want to make honey. The first thing, the next thing they tell you is, I put a queen excluder on it. What are you doing that for? And you know what their answer is? I don't want brood in my honey. Right? That's, that's the common answer. Doesn't it make more sense? If that queen is that good, here's what an average queen does. This is nine and nine, it's 18 inches. An exceptional queen is 24, that's to here. If I got brood up here, the most logical thing, if I wanna make honey, add another box. More bees make more honey. So if uh, I have a lot of honey down with the brood then, is that called honey bound? I'm, honey bound? I'm bomb. tying in the queen, she can't lay. She can't lay, Okay. that's gonna trigger a swarming. Gotcha. Because two things they do, nothing changes. Always those two things. <clears throat> Nothing's changed. See. You learned something on that one? <laughs> no, that I, that I did, did know. Okay. One thing I don't know, it, uh, I did buy excluders years and years ago, but I've never used them mm -hmm. because of what I've read working, uh, reading about you. One thing is that I've been using the, um, I don't even know what you call it, but when I harvest, I put a thing on top that allows the bees to go out, but not That's a one-way bee escape? And I've been using that with success. Is that okay? That's okay. I mean, uh, the bees, you have to get them out of the thing. Some people worry more. I usually just shake the bees, and I put it in a wheelbarrow with a lid cover. But 90% of the people that get into bees, they listen to too much wrong information. They'll put a queen excluder around because they're thinking it's, they don't want brood up here. Do you realize once you put a queen excluder around here, it holds the queen down. That's one purpose. The next thing, those other bees, they have to squeeze through these narrow places to come up. The minute they do that, it shortens their life. It wears their wings up 50% quicker. They don't tell you that because they're trying to sell you queen excluders. They're trying to sell you metal. They're trying to sell you screen bottom boards. I'm not trying to sell you a thing. Common sense, reason it out. If you have a question, that's the time to ask. And I don't have the answers. Everything I'm telling you is it come out of my back pocket. I don't have the government subsidizing my mistakes for years and years. I have two hives from years ago, two hives with screen bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, why is that not a good idea? Okay, common sense. Okay, look at my foot. Is that wet? Yep. Now you see that sun there? Mm-hmm. Where's that moisture going to go? It's going to get absorbed. No, it's going to rise up. Oh, if it rise up, up, where's it going then? Into my bees, now chilling them and killing them. Now what do you got? You got a moisture problem, you got a fungal problem. Ah. So you learned two things there. Ah, at least. <laughs> <laughs> what if you were higher off the ground? If you're higher off the ground, moisture, <coughs> vapors still, still rise. Yeah, I'm uh, about three and a half feet or whatever that your, is. Your bottom board, which is there, should be no higher than your kneecap. Okay, well my, my bottom board is. My bottom board's about here. Well, no honey flow. The queen can't lay here. You have to wait till the bees draw this down. But if you put a full sheet in here, see the embossing on here? That queen can lay in the, each of these little indentations. They'll draw the comb out as the, the uh, cells develop in the larva. It puts you down the road to make money about five to seven days at least. But I put a lot of starter shifts in to kill the honey flow. I don't want a honey flow because if I'm in a box like that, it takes me too long. If I'm selling bees from that box, I have to go to the brood box. That means I've got to lift two boxes or three boxes. I'm in and out of 40 to 50 hives an hour. I don't play with those hives. What? Wow. <laughs> okay. These, these are quicker. These, uh, I've got videos up where I've taught ladies to come up here and other people that the lady said, I can't catch queens. Two weeks later, she was catching them. We timed it 15 seconds for someone who said, I can't do that. <laughs> There's three people in the bee yard out here put you out of business. You know that? Wooden, couldn't, and can't. Uh. <laughs>
when people say, you can't do that. I'm doing stuff as you see right here. Everybody says, if you've got 25 hives, you're not going to make no honey. I don't want the honey. I make sometimes two to two and a half tons of honey here. I'm pouring it out. If I have students that want to buy it by the bucket, I sell it to them. <coughs> money is in the bees. I don't know if people explain all that to you. I haven't heard that. If you want to sell that, honey. you want to start, the place to start is making honey, right? Yeah, they all make so honey. Real yeah. good. Okay. But see, most every bee club around will not tell you the drawbacks. You start selling honey, you can sell it without licenses and, and the FDA and all these regulations as right off the street mm -hmm. from uh, at your farm. Mm -hmm. But you have to stop and think, how much money do you want to spend to defend yourself? No. <clears throat> right? Yeah. What if what if you get busy selling honey? The woods all the time. Mm -hmm. Do they have a queen excluder in the woods? Screen bottom boards? Mm -hmm. no. All this stuff? Everybody has a gimmick they want to sell you. Believe me, yeah. you don't need any of that. You could just get two boxes and, and put a square box together. Butt joints don't have to be fancy. Nothing has to be fancy. <coughs> a box contained the bees. Well, speaking about uh, people mm. trying to sell you things that cost a lot, um, when I first started, people didn't treat with anything. And now every uh, meeting I go to at my state association, you know, there are five more, five more bad pesticide type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Would you speak to treatment or not treatment and all that? That is your belief. If you believe your bees are going to live without treating them in some way or form, yeah. then you've got some bees that I'd like to have. You're going to have to do something. Now, people treat with powder sugar. They don't treat. They dust their bees with powder sugar. Even the college says it does do some effect. You put powder sugar on there, right down on the ground, now you've got an ant problem. Yeah. All it does is knock the, the mites off, and it doesn't do nothing else, they come right back. Oh. Okay, the easiest way without putting chemicals in is split them hives. Split them, split them, split them. The more you split them, you break the cycle of the mites. It takes, it's just like an egg, 21 days, 21 days. Mm -hmm. By doing that, you eliminate. You can treat with oils. Now, I, I believe that I've read that you thought that the oil treatment was effective and I necessary. don't believe, I know. You know? I know. <laughs> I haven't done any treatment if you, in years. If you treat your sugar water with, with, lemon with very little lemongrass, spearmint, and wintergreen, then the bees consume that, and then they feed that to the brood. In turn, the mites don't like it. They won't reproduce in that. The next thing is small cell. Small cell mites will not reproduce well. Yeah, I have small cell. Okay, see, that's why people say, put drone comb in there and then freeze it. Well, you're wasting all that honey and because they have to feed those drones. Unless you're making bees and you need the drones, because if you, if you put out, say, a thousand queens a week, then you need about 35,000 drones that are mature enough to make. Well, fortunately, I've been around so long that I never was aware of the bigger size until I already was established. I don't have a bee, a, a, a mite problem. Uh, or I, and, you know, people that come to inspect and do all of that stuff say, oh, you have to have mites, you have to have mites. Nobody's been able to demonstrate that I have a mite problem. But my question is, after having lost half of my hives last year, um, is that something I should be doing in an organic way, such as the oils? You have to do something to the bees, whether you make a lot of splits, break that mite cycle, feed them a little bit of wintergreen, and they'll <clears throat> less reproduce, small cell foundation. I've been doing small cell foundation before it become popular. And people at UGA, uh, Jennifer Berry said, it don't work. Why all of a sudden is she switched to <laughs> small cell? That's I've right. done things and they're documented by the date on YouTube in 90 and 91 that people left it. People said, you can't overwinter a hive in the wintertime, five frame box. Why is Michael Bush, Michael Palmer, Kirk Webster, they all do it now. Right. Hey, if you live in a two story house and you have all the rooms upstairs and it's wintertime, do you heat them or do you shut them off? Hmm? You heat them. You don't heat them. You shut the registers off so the heat don't go up, right? Oh. Is that what you do? 
All right, so I'm basically doing that. I'm taking the hive, putting the hive top feeder down here, condensing everything down. They maintain heat better. If I had a hive here, single story, and you had a hive that had two supers honey on it, which one do you think is going to survive? The one that has more insulation on the top. The one with two supers won't. One with less area. Less hairy, well, they got more area to heat. Mm -hmm. So when they heat, they have to eat honey, right? I thought you said we have a hive top on the Well, bottom. if I have a hive top here, but I'm comparing that with a hive top in a single story oh, to okay. a hive that has two supers of honey right. on it, see? Exactly. You have more area to heat, and they have to eat more honey to create the heat. Mm -hmm. So they basically, they eat themselves out of house and home. Well, I put the hive top on one, and then I keep the other two just now, for insulation. I don't know if that Well, I wouldn't leave honey that. without no, bees no, on I mean, it. Comb, you mean to store comb? Yeah. I don't store comb. Oh, okay. Okay. And I'm glad you brought that up. People, they say put mothball crystals on them, or you can stagger them, you know, instead of putting them all this way, one here, one that way, back and forth. Have two, two problems. If you put crystals on it, the smell don't come out and the chemical don't come out. If you open stack them, the problem you have then is rodents. <laughs> if a mouse gets in there and does a pee in there, it takes a long time for the bees to accept that again. I take every, if I take this super off in this super in September or October when I'm done with honey, I cut all the wax out and put new wax every single year. Oh. Now, if you've got bees now, you can prove it to yourself. Take an old comb down here and pull out one of the frames and drop a frame of new foundation in and go back in one day or two days, I'll guarantee you the queen will be on that new wax land. Maybe you've seen that where you work. Mm -hmm. Wherever you change, what there's where she's at. Mm -hmm. The bees are telling you something if you want to listen. They don't like that old comb because they're going to pick up pesticide whether you use it or not. Got on the road using chemicals on his lawn, so many bushes. So you have to think like bees. Well, I don't use foundation, so it, I'm not. I'm not. You're using, doing natural drawing. Right, and, and you know it's maybe one year old at the most. Yeah. I just thought that I was filling it up with something and two boxes on top with the cover at the bottom. I thought that that was providing more insulation. It sounds like that might not be the case. Well, you have to make those decisions yourself. See, I do not use comb, even if it's white looking, I put all new in. Because if you look at bees, they have wax platelets on their stomach. They do that all the time. Mm -hmm. You can sit in front of that hive in the summer on a block or something, and every once in a while, it looks like dandruff coming out. The bees are pulling platelets off and shedding them. So if you harvest them by pulling frames out or letting them draw their own, they use it, they chew it up, uh, rework it, and then you it. sell it. I have seen that dandruff. I didn't know what that was. You learned another thing today. Oh, wow. <laughs> right before now, Don. <laughs> well, I'm a clean slate. I'm, I, I, I know nothing. So I'm learning from all of you, so thank you. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm so a clean, yeah, I'm yeah, a clean slate. Well, so. I'm here to stay, you know, basic beekeeping as I'm trying to show you, don't go out there, especially a woman, and buy a 10 frame and everything they want to sell you. Because they'll sell you the kitchen sink. Oh, I know. You don't need all that stuff. <clears throat> now, you, I know you're going to think for a while. You've got more, more questions. Mm -hmm. I like people that's been in beekeeping at least four or five years or some 10 years. And they'll, they'll see how they can compare things. Well, I do have another question. Um, I've never fed my bee, well, years and years ago, but in the last several years, I have not fed sugar water because Bush said that the pH was blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, make a comment on that. All right. Between you and, and Michael Bush, you know, I have I, people I do everything come here that will swear on the Bible. I'm a vegetarian, okay? I don't disagree with them. You're a vegetarian. Let's go camping. I take them out into the, the desert. And second day, the snake goes by. Pretty soon, the third day, they're ready to eat. Okay. <laughs> now, you can't put bees in there without feeding them. Okay. Even when there's a decent nectar flow? People say it's not good to feed sugar. Other words, go out here and cut all the trees down. Every maple tree you got, that's nothing but sugar. But the pH... According to Bush, Technical the, the bees, pH you know. from the tree is different than the pH from my sugar, no. so I should forget that. She's saying that's your call. <laughs> well, 
He's trying to be politically nice. Like, yes. uh, you know, we always have extra honey. Mm -hmm. um, if I need to feed, which usually I don't, but if I need to feed, mm -hmm. uh, we have two short uh, nectar flows where we're from, and when the second one is just about over, you know, I've started uh, giving them their own honey back. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Sure. I'll show you on this frame right here. That is a real good point because people get to the point where um, their hive is to starve. Now, if you have honey, I like a honey bear. Those honey bears turn the frame sideways. Once it's drawn out, they're on an angle upward, like five to seven degrees. Take a honey bear and just drizzle it down through there. Stick it up against the roof. That's five things you need. Oh my God. Can you run that again? You take yeah, a frame so that's to draw it out and your bees are starving, mm -hmm. take up some honey with a honey bear and just squirt it back and forth and let it go down in those combs and then stick it back and hive up against the cluster and they'll get, anything that's running out, they'll pick it up and they won't starve. So that won't cause um, robbing? Why would they call it robbing? Would seeing Frank honey like, I mean I have always been told and one of the most important Ooh, things that we're going to learn here. today is all the stuff that you hear and you read that's wrong, which is why I'm here. You're saying robbing. Mm. Robbing, right. Other hives robbing. Did um, you see that barrel over there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you yes. see that long hose comes out here? Yes. That's I'm, a soaker hose. Uh-huh. I mix honey uh -huh. and sugar in here and I crack the bell on a soaker hose. It comes out all day. Oh. They line up like a bunch of piggies. Okay, well, that's my question, though, because like I've always been told like to feed as far away from my hives. Does those see? people make a living, or are they selling you something, or want to be famous, or acting for They're selling you. I'm not selling you nothing. They're selling you. You don't have to feed like that. Mm. So you, th you think it would be okay to put a little in the hive, and that the other hives won't come and rob? Why would they rob? Because... Because someone said they would? Because somebody said they would. <laughs> okay, okay uh, we run other bee yards, and we run 50 to 100 hives at a bee yard, an out yard. Now, we open some hives up, and we have to start pulling honey. In that situation where they start to rob, you know what we do? What do you think people tell you to do? They tell you to, to go someplace separate where the bees can't get no, to you're you. No, pulling, in your bee yard, you're pulling the, the honey, and now the bees start to rob. What, what does everybody tell you to do? Cover it up. Really? So you know that, what we so do? So that they, oh. But you don't know. You let them eat it. No. What? We got good strong hives, what we do when they start robbing. We go around, we open all the lids up. Now what do you think they're going to do? <laughs> everybody goes back home, guard the house. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> I never thought it worked till we did it. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. I teach common sense. <laughs> Once the robbing stops, the stops usually five to seven minutes. They will go back to their house, they won't rob anyone else. Oh, back up. They're too busy defending their own. Well, my husband <laughs> just built me a whole new like in this, like now. Like what, for spring. putting a package in or an established hive? Package. A package? As long as, when you put a package in, all the old beekeepers want to put a nail through that. The candy in the queen cage is a time release door. And all the old beekeepers want to put a nail through that. Yeah. If you do that, and the queen gets out, before they accept the pheromones, they're going to kill that queen. Okay. So we should let them eat this. That's what it's for. Oh my goodness. I wait three days, you know, when they're, the pheromones like, have well, been now, dissipated. There is a but difference. But the idea of letting them use that is Three food. to four days, if you go back there, I tell people, put the packaging, leave it alone for three to four days. The right. fourth day, or even the fifth day, you go in there. If she's not released, then you can direct release her. Now, what happens sometimes, other suppliers make their candy up so far ahead that it gets too hard. Mm -hmm. That's the, it's a timing release is what it is, is all it is. Mm -hmm. So, I hope that answers you. I mean, there's, 
there's thousands of scenarios. I mean, I'm trying to do everything as broad as I can. Now what I'm just gonna what I did last year, I had five hives, mm -hmm. lost two, one two absconding and one swarmed on me. So I wintered through three hives through the winter. I've still got three hives right now. But what I did in the fall, like from the end of September, because we had no flow of any nectar or honey or anything going on, it, the goldenrod had gone down. I fed off my back porch with feeders, bucket feeders. Not a good idea. Okay, and why would that not be? The because bees were coming and yeah. I mean going. I mean, they sucked it dry. Yeah. I mean. How, how many of them did you recognize? <laughs> did you have them all marked? Was they no. all yours? Now, I'm did sure you? some of them were not mine. <laughs> now, what yeah. you're doing is exactly. attracting a bunch of bees to, and bees can fly by a hive. They can sense you got a weak hive. Mm -hmm. They'll go to that weak hive, and then it starts dominoes down through your bee yard. <clears throat> okay. So you only recommend feeding your hive in the hive, not out. Worst comes to worst, put a jar in there, and everybody's seen the jar feeders? Mm -hmm. When they sell them, they got rows and rows of holes. Mm -hmm. Throw that lid away. Get a canning lid and put the canning lid on there, take a staple gun and shoot one staple in there and take the staple out. Now you got two holes. I don't know if I got some cans around here that show you. It's the same size hole that we use for packages. Okay. The bees will suck it down, they're not going to starve. But when you put too much, what holds that syrup in that jar? Right. Vacuum, right? right? Vacuum. And at night, the barometric pressure changes. And then mm -hmm. if you've got a uh, feeder there, on the top of the hive or in the front, oh, either I way, it that. goes gurk, gurk, gurk. And if it's in the front of the hive, now you've got a bunch of ants coming. You're feeding them. Right. If it's on the top of the hive, now you drown the queen. Been there, done that. Yeah. <laughs> All I can do is provide the thing. You have to apply it. But now, going back to feeding, everybody says one to one, you know, all this. When you open a can of peaches, when you pour it, that's what you want to duplicate or more. So the I mean, thicker the what? better? Huh? The thicker the syrup the better. Well, the bees have a one to one or a two to one or a five to one. And it's called a state inspector and say, do you suspect that they got foul brew? Your neighbors did that. They didn't, the, the state come out and inspect for it? Um, I just know that they're very unhappy that the state. Because if you have foul brew, the state has the right to come in and burn everything you got. Well, nobody's come in and burned them, but they've been told that they have to burn them. I don't and they don't normally do that. Now you have to burn everything, the complete hive, don't you? Mm -hmm. You yep. have to burn. You, what are you going to salvage? Exactly. That's what, that's what I was figuring. I, yeah. There's nothing now, you can salvage. Tennessee, it was I don't know how many years back. They had a program, a portable uh, treating unit. It was basically a treat for uh, diseases and stuff. You pull a vacuum out like they treat for pressure treated wood, and they found out it was ineffective. The only thing that old beekeepers know that it works is burning. It's cheaper to burn a hive than to take a chance on it. It's, mm -hmm. you, can, you can listen to a lot of people who take a chance, you want do what you want. I mean, all I can do is give you some advice and you have to make your own decision. Well, that's when we get back home in D.C., that's one of the things I'm going to find out is what happened. Okay. Uh, what they, what they did and didn't do. I, I'm going to try to do, depending if I get some students up here can shoot videos, I want to do complete videos on how to treat with all the oils and stuff. Uh, that would be uh, fabulous. Joe May is one of my students and it's the little detail he didn't listen to. When you feed in the springtime and you feed in the fall, it's two different ways to feed. Lemongrass, a drop goes a long ways. If you put too much lemongrass in your feed, you attract a lot of bees and you're going to have a robbing situation. Lemongrass is good as a, uh, it's like a honeybee healthy or a big brood builder. It'll cause them to stimulate and really eat. And the more they engorge themselves, the more wax they produce and the more they grow. I was, I, I just mm. bought honeybee healthy for the first time last year, but I haven't used it. Um, Would you buy a that, gallon? Um, it's, it's about this much. How much, much. did you cost that? A lot. No, tell me how much you think you I don't remember. I bought it last year. I haven't used it mm. yet. You saw it in the cabinet. It's oh, Barnyard Beef sells eight ounces for $32. Yeah. 
for the honey to be healthy. I paid at least that for whatever it is. Thirty-two dollars. It's it was a lot of money. If you and now if I'm you know if what I you're doing and it. you buy the right oils, you, that container's three hundred gallons. You could fill it three times with oils. Oh. And when you buy any essence of oil, make sure you read it that it says natural or steam pressed, not for aromatherapy. If you buy aromatherapy, it's cheap. And if you tell me you went to like GNC and you, you got something for $6, uh, like lemongrass oil or tea tree oil, for $6 it's, it's aromatherapy. But I don't think a uh, tea tree oil comes with aromatherapy. I'm just using that as an example. Right, right. But like uh, wintergreen or spearmint, stuff like that, you know, or lavender, it'll smell, but it doesn't do the bees any good. You're wasting your time and money. Okay. Can I just make a comment sure. since we're on the yeah. oils? Yeah. He's got a formula on YouTube that works great. However, <laughs> get you a really, really cheap blender because that oil will destroy your blender. <laughs> I, am not, I still hear that from her. And that's, I have one designated just for the yeah, oil emulsification because I, you have to blend it five minutes yeah. to get the oils It'll to blend together up. and stay together. Yeah. Mm. yeah. When you when yeah. you do your concentrations, you. always that's wear latex gloves, it's going to burn you. Um, yeah. Now that I have that bottle, mm -hmm. should I follow, I assume the instructions are, should I use that or should I do my own? Well, you bought it, use it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is it just as good as doing well, it? Or is it good enough to use this it, year since I bought it? It's a product you're paying for a service. It's like here. You're probably getting, if somebody was here taking everything Don I said today and put it in a the book, they'd sell it for $30 or $40. Sure. You know. So use it. But okay. you can make your own the stuff next just time as good I don't use. have to do that. Yeah. But those are the oils you want to try to, to buy yourself. Now, I buy my stuff by the gallon. 450 bucks is a drop in a bucket. And some people, you know, that's a lot of money. But you know, like I buy frames. Everything mm -hmm. I buy is in, in quantities. Mm -hmm. We buy sugar by the ton, not the bag. Mm. <laughs> in fact, right now I'm trying to get a deal going, make a tractor trailer load with about 40, 4,700, 47,000 on it. Oh. Sugar? Sugar. That ain't nothing. <laughs> <laughs> There's 330 gallons, in, or 300, about 300 gallons in that there, and to feed our bee yards, if there's no honey flow, he might use that once a week or sometimes twice a week. But see, this is a small, this is a schoolyard. So, I don't know, have you ever been to our out yards? No, we got, uh, within an hour drive here, we run about eight yards. Wow. We don't normally take our students to our bee yeah. yards unless they're pretty experienced. Here, you're paying me 500 bucks. I expect you're going to make a mistake. In fact, I tell students, if you follow me around and did exactly like what I do all day long, you ain't learn nothing. I want you to work a hive. I want you to make a mistake so I can help you. Mm. If you don't make a mistake, you ain't going to learn nothing. It's just like this hive tool. And people buy these big, long hooks with a thing on the end. And I hope you don't have that. You got that. Dude. I don't know. It's in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I All have right. that too. There's there's several different uh, scrapers that they got. You see this? It's dull. Yeah. They can pass it around and feel it. And I want to explain to you a why. I already know why. And that's a pride Because <laughs> I've done it. I have too. What have you done? Cut my hands. Yeah, I have too. You know there's, really? a, there's a right yeah. way and there's a wrong way to carry that? <laughs> I learned that, Don. That's the right way with this hook inside, because then you can't go like that. See this? <laughs> yeah. We well, yeah. learned that. Yes. That's the wrong way. Wow. Okay. Okay. And it does slice you when you don't and even know it, and you go, "My gosh, what did yeah. I do?" Yeah. I'm not being discriminatory against women, but yeah. if I teach women and I teach men, the women are want to be clean. And, and tidy. So they take the hive tool and clean all the burr comb off of all the frames. Don't ever do that. Mm -hmm. Because what will happen, and I've done it, the reason I tell you because I made those mistakes. If that queen sticks her head up to see what's going on and you do this, you decap decapitate that queen. Yeah. Okay? 
God, I do that every year. You, do you scrape those frames? <laughs> I do. There's a lot of women through and through. Eleven. I'll never do it again. <laughs> you learned it eleven. It feels so good. <laughs> eleven. Today. We're on eleven. Yeah, let's make All it right. an even dozen. Now, the reason that you're doing this, why do you think you're doing that? I'm trying to get the bird home. No. The only reason they're making bird comb is because the distance between the top of the frame to the next hide is incorrect. Oh. Okay? So they're building a ladder to climb. Oh my word. What I teach here, believe me, I teach you what is not in books. Take yeah. care. Good evening. But the inspectors say that they have to be, and you know, since I don't use The inspector foundation. doesn't make a living. Oh, uh, okay. I hate my inspector, but anyway. <laughs> Um, the inspector says that they have to be clean before she comes so that she can get the frames inside and out. And she uses she says an that? all, uh, she, she comes, it's never going to happen to me again. I'm going to, and does she that's have to supply her? That's right, we're already at a dozen. So does she have to supply the throwaway coat or? She is the state bee inspector. Yes. She has to provide her stuff, not you. Yes. Okay. She is a hateful person. <laughs> Once. I want a video. Yeah, video that one. Okay. Why did you put that on the I'm, I'm not kidding. Site. She's not you a You sell honey, don't person. you? No, I don't sell. Oh. I, uh, well, I thought you made us sell some honey. No, no, no. No, I don't sell anything. Okay. Maybe we we have eight hives bees. and their gifts. Do we gifts have to have an inspection on bees? If you... That's a good question. Yeah, I've even good. asked the bee inspector here. In, in this state, there's a shortage of bee inspectors, and I suppose it's everywhere. Yes. But here's the thing. Two for all the state of Georgia. Okay. Well, for Virginia has eight or nine. Here's the thing, though. <laughs> Mary's in business, okay? And I go to Tennessee, and I buy two hives from her. And I call her up and say, Mary, my bees are dying now, and I got fowl brood from you. And Mary holds up her certificate. State says I'm free and clear of all diseases. Save yourself a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. It's but, not required. But if you're doing it as a business, you want yeah. to cover your butt. And, yeah. There you go. Now, even with me picking up Don's bees to take them back to Virginia, when I get to Virginia, I have to call my local inspector and he has to come out and inspect those bees before I can even put them into a hive. No, nope. really? he can't inspect them. That's a good question. That, that, there's a law that the bee inspector inspects for fowl brood. There's no inspector that can look at a package and say, you've got fowl brood. Right. Right? So what are they looking at? They're yeah. checking for disease. He um, wants to be a butt. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now Tennessee, all I had to do was show the certificate that Don had, and he said your packages are clear. We're good. Oh my cool. God. Yeah. You probably also. Where in Virginia? Uh, when you, uh, let's see if I get. Uh, go and go back and get another, another frame. Yeah. Or get get two more. And that way I want you to show me how you spread the frames. Because you're experienced more. Oh, I am. I've been doing the same mistakes for 30 no. years. <laughs> I, want, I want you to go out here and say, I learned 15 or 16 new things. Well, we're doing real She's well so far. That. She's ready to go home. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time the head starts swimming. Yeah. Now, you know what this stuff here is? I did my first this time. is glue. Propolis. For many years, I scraped that oh, off and propolis. put it, yes. put it, put sorry, it on the I ground. Didn't, I didn't know how to Medicine it. cabinet. <laughs> that is sixty dollars a pound. It is. Okay. It's good stuff. All right, come on over here. Taking. Pull that feet. Oh, there. All right. I didn't know I had that. Let's let's get it down one more. Get her apart, baby. Separate it. Yeah, get her separate. There you All go. Right. <laughs> Now, I want you to pretend that I'm not here. Okay. Okay. And let's let's put some extra frames. Okay. This is the way the hive is. You just open it. Now, show me how you inspect that hive. Okay. Full of, well, I full start of first by frame. taking all of the burr comb okay, you off. You don't want to do that now, right? And I start by looking down and okay. make sure that there's nothing connecting them mm -hmm. because I don't have the wooden frame. I have uh, my own foundation. And I usually start on the end and I go in and separate them on both okay, now, ends. Okay, stop right there now so you learn. 
You see how she separated the frames? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, give me the hive tool. Remember, this is the weakest part. Those hives, those frames are stuck together. The minute you do this, and you've seen the glue it was on it, it's gonna bust right down here. Mm. Now you're throwing a frame away. Mm. See? All right. Let's, all right, this, here's the, the proper way. You should get in this end and do this. Ah. Separate it like this, then pull it out. Okay. Basically, you should take, you see there's, there's an inch here. Every hive, mm -hmm. whether it's a five frame, an eight frame, or ten frame, has that. It's made for a queen cage. You separate oh. it apart and put the queen cage. So what you want to do is center them over to this side and then pull that frame out. Okay? All right, here, get that there. And then just like you're inspecting this hive, pull the frame out and, and look at it. Well, because and, mine... and show me where you put the frame at when after you get that out. Well, for me, I have to do it this way because I don't have the wood. And I inspect it. And I do the same thing, and I expect the other side. You'll never spot the queen that way. See, now. You hold now, it this way? She's, she's used to using the, uh, foundation. This. If you take this like this on an angle and look this way, mm -hmm. you'll spot it right away. If you look this way, you don't get depth perception. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, well, I think in the process of doing what I do, always I turn do it have slow. It. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't. Oh, there's a little beetle. I don't have too much trouble finding the queen, but I think I must have figured that out over the years because initially I spent days looking. So I must have accidentally realized that at an angle is better. Yeah, if you hold it this way, when you ho whenever you inspect the hive, inspect the frame over the hive. Ah. Because as you turn it, if the queen falls off, she'll fall in there. But if you do it out here, it's going to hit the ground. Okay. Ooh, All right, when you pull this first frame out, <coughs> mm -hmm. now you have room to lift your frames. Mm -hmm. Take this frame out, and when you make sure, you look it over good, there's no queen, you set it against the hive that it come out of. Not the next hive. Mm -hmm. See, I, yes? Why do you put it like that? Why don't you put it on its end? Why? Yes, sir. Because it's more stable this way, it's more stable. surface surface. Stability, yeah. Yeah. yes, sir. Okay. And, you know, I run my highs real close, and this is what you don't want to do. You know why you don't right. do that? No, Next I don't know why. If, there's, if you miss the queen, uh -huh. the queen does not like a suntan. Uh -huh. So she'll run to the back side. <laughs> okay. And then if you've got a queen in here, or if it's queenless, she might run in there and get killed. So I don't put it next to the hive next to the it. The hive to come out of. Put it in the shady side. Well, you said side. don't put it in the sun. Is it so? No, right no, now the, it's in queen, the, sun. the queen. If there's a queen there's on a here, queen on she's going to run around the back side. Right, okay. 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 This is not a good What did you say frame. this was on the. That's hive. propolis. That, that is the, actually the medicine of the beehive. Yes, um, that is wonderful stuff. And yep. so And that's many where you put it. What? No, they they make it. I don't put it, the bees do that. Oh, oh, okay. it, it fights infection in yep. us as well. Mm -hmm. So oh. it can be used to make medicine for yeah. us. Pe people that make attention. Uh, it it's a bees glue. Bees are smarter than us. It's a glue and they use it to <laughs> seal up any cracks or voids or anything else like that. Because that's the that's the narrow that's where they come together, so they're filling well, that they're, in. they're it's glue. sealing everything up as much yeah, as they can. And no no more. Now you said don't use glue. Does that mean don't make your boxes out of plywood? Well, I wouldn't make a box out of plywood, but if you don't have nothing else, it's better than nothing. But all <laughs> glues contain formaldehyde. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and formaldehyde is any bombing fluid. Yes, it is. Plywood mm -hmm. has glue, so why use it then, right? Well, we used to use plywood, but we only used it on the lid. So you've got a hive top feeder, and vapors this go up. This has glue in it. Yes, but look where it's at. It's above <coughs> the bees. Okay. Bees don't even come in contact with it, see? Okay, so it's just for the top. If you can use regular wood, which it has is. some drawbacks to it, you can use that. And I always paint the complete bottom board because you seal all your cracks up. And you never paint the inside of a beehive because then it becomes water repellent. That beehive has to absorb the moisture out of that hive. And we try to run a uh, hole in front and back. Um, see, see how the problems mm -hmm. are building it up? Yeah. That was on a hive. They'll close up the door too much air or too much ventilation. How about painting the lid? 
painting the lid, inside of it. If you paint the lid, you get drop of some moisture here. This one hasn't really been painted right. This should be painted here and an inch in here wherever the brush hits because this hangs over the edge and all you're trying to do is preserve wood. See? Now, this frame here, can you tell me what's wrong with that frame or you would use it? Well, it looks like old. It looks old and... Well, it's not really that old. Okay. That's had two cycles of root in it. Okay. Um, not very good laying pattern and not, not much uh, honey on it. I see some pollen, but all of this darkness, I don't use it. When you anything. say they're not a good laying pattern, you see this dark here? Mm -hmm. The dark here? Anything that's dark, that's a laying pattern. The first thing is wrong is the frame is full of drone comb. Mm -hmm. This was a starter strip pudding. Ah. And see? So uh, the drone keep comb going. Again. This is cells. stretched out comb. Oh, there's a beehive right at the corner up there. Would you go up there and there's some frames that's got waxing? There's mm -hmm. two of them. Bring those two frames up. That way I want to show you these are, uh, these are okay for what we do. These are drones. But when you start to see this, I want you to look at some frames and then give me that you would use them or not, and I'll tell you the reasoning. Okay. But this is not bad. When you get the chocolate color or the black looking, that's when you want to replace it. Okay. This is really old for us. We run three cycles of brood or brood or four, maybe four cycles. See? Okay. Change out your foundation. That's the life of the hive. One of the things that I hear. Past. Yeah. What is your typical time? When you open the package, how long does it take you? Well, it takes me longer to open the package than it does to get the bees in. Okay. I dump the majority of them and then I leave the package on top of the hive. You You're going to want to move, Ben. Pardon? Oh, no, I was talking to my wife. Now, I normally save the scrapings here, but I'm cleaning this up to put a package in. So I'm not going to worry about a few dollars. Now, if you have drawer cone, you can use drawed comb. I used to set up a lot on brand new foundation because about 90% of everything I can install is already pre-sold. Now, here we go to where every box has got this distance. If the box is built right, a queen cage will fit in here. Okay? Let me see how far I have a queen cage here. you install a package and the weather's going to be halfway decent, this is another reason to have this. Separate your frames, use this in the middle. See all those frames of bow? Put that in just like that. And reach up, they should have good traction to it so it ain't going to move. I just did that for demonstration. The next thing you want to have is a shaking box. This is a shaking box. Okay, and then make sure you got a feeder. So we'll find us a feeder. This one needs to be fixed. This one's not in great condition. But we use it since it's a demonstration. That's why I always need stuff here done. Everything's got a vent hole. Have everything ready so that when you're ready to work, you're ready to work. Okay. Are you happy with that, or do you want this one? I oh, will use that one. There, it hurt. If it leaks, the other bees will collect it. Now you have to decide at this point: Are you right hand or left hand? I'm right hand, so I always put the strap, the queen cage holder or handle, put it down. Now this is sugar water with a little bit of lemongrass. Now you see how the bees are clustered. Bobby pin. Oh yeah, I was wondering about that. Check your queen. Everybody's alive, We're saying hello. Take your cork out. Put it in your pocket. If you're here and I say put ten packages in, <laughs> you hand me ten corks back. If not. What happens, Mary, if you don't have ten corks? 
Obviously, you gotta find I didn't uncork one, and I've got to go back and check them to make sure. And you've one. already got them excited. <laughs> so and I got my queen cage where. out, right? Okay. She's alive. We'll put her in here. Now, what I'm going to do is put the shaking box here. I'm going to put those bees in in a few seconds. I'm going to drop the box here and put the lid on. So stand back or don't swing at them. I'm going to put a little bit more spray on them. I'm not drowning them. Once you get to that point, walk away from the hive, stand still. The bees are going to go right to the queen. Once you get to, see how they settle it down? Walk up with your hive tool, put it in front of the hive. Just like that. See? The hive tool, two small holes. You see the size holes? That's what I was telling you about the rows of holes. Pass that around, everybody feel it. Feel the heat that those bees produce. Feel the side that can? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's what was feeding them. That's how much it's feeding them. That package is good for about 10 to 15 days. So if you're shipping them, you're good until they get some. See? That's why I'm trying to answer Cools everybody's off question. A bit. Mm -hmm. Feel the heat in there? Cooled off real quick by the time it got to me. Well, it's pretty warm when I got it out. How do you get a can with both ends out? Okay. You buy them? Yeah. yeah. You know how you you know how what you it, a, a uncapper, electric can opener does? Yeah. yeah. It's got a wheel that goes around. It's cutting. A canner has got two like this, like a plow. You set that new lid on top, and it just goes around like that and folds it in. So you do your own canning. <laughs> you want to save money? <laughs> Never stick your finger in there. See the bees up here already? That's the beauty part. They're not in your face. So you just dump it Walk around the back. Oh, see? Walk down the back. Look at that. I got to be in here ready. That's pretty syrupy. Yeah. See how it's not splashing? It's like peach syrup. It is. See? See how they're already up in the feeder? Yes. Then I lay this here with the hole up so that bees don't drown. Then I get my lid and I put it on the box. See? Like so. So I'm about to get a better lid. Uh, I gotta build some lids on there. Is this one got bees? Yeah, that's got bees. John, you got a you got a lid over here on top of this. Is it a good lid? Designate it for whenever you have drawed comb, burr comb, walk over and put it in. At the end of the day, it's like finding a $20 bill or a $30 bill. All right, spread them apart and see if you got you got enough room. Okay. All right. All right. You sure this ain't too high for you? No, I think we're all right. When you go to use this, give it a shake or two, and then put your queen cage in. What you might want to do is put them a little lower. Get your queen, your cage, and everything out. I mean, you can see her. I don't know why somebody did that. I think they're helping, I guess. Is that the can that I just set up there? Did you just set that up? <laughs> no, did you do this? I did, it was on the ground. I okay, fell. all right. Let me tell you why you don't do that. Heat? Huh? Heat? No. No, no, no. Well, I got a guy that does pick them up. When you set it up here, yeah. what happens is if you forget about it and it rains, the bees get in here, right, then. then they pile up on one another, you have a bunch of dead bees. Oh. You just throw them in the ground. I only set them like this when I put a package in. Okay. The bees clean them up and throw them in the ground. Okay. Everything has got a reason. Hey, hey, it's not that old man stuck in his ways. Here I am. That's it. <laughs> oh, you might have a few here. This is the supervisor chair. You see what I was telling you about there? People, how they pay me, I watch them and then stay here and watch. <laughs> We're going to stop calling you Don. It's going to be Tom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wait, Mary, what are you trying to do? I'm trying to pull the queen out. Wait, 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 wait. Stay full. Wait, wait, wait. Sometimes, listen first. What you're doing, you're fighting yourself. 
pump them down, then reach in and get the cage itself in your oh, hand, okay. and, and then just reach out. back and then put the stack on it. Gotcha. All right, at this point, have the can ready because you feel that wind. Mm -hmm. Always have a can ready. When you pull that cage, set that lid back on and put a, a can of syrup on it because if that blows off, you can have bees in the air. Okay. One good bump down. Always hold the lid. <laughs> now put your can on it. Here, no, don't take it off yet. Set your can. Now, you can either use your hive tool or just take your, put your fingers like this over each end. Just a little tool. Okay? Get those bees Oh, you got stuck wire. Excuse yeah. me? Yeah, just pull. Roll it to you. Roll it. Roll. There you go. Yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. Now take, keep your fingers over that and pull this uh, piece off. Yeah, there you go. Now, you got your safety pin? No. Ah! <laughs> now, do you pull the candy? <laughs> you pulling off the candy side, correct? Candy side. Always double check. Always check you your cage. You're getting the cork out. Okay. Get, yeah, okay. Stick it in a little bit and always save the cork. Save the back right of the cork. Okay. <laughs> you see what happened? You had some students that remember everything? Uh huh, smarty pants. Now no. you go someplace, you say, never set your cans that way. Alright, here you go, your safety pin. Okay. Okay. I got this. Okay, cork. That's why always have everything ready when you're working the bee yard. I always try to keep one or two safety <coughs> pins. And another thing is when you take the cork out, Close the safety pin because you run your hand across and you get it in your arm. Yeah. Right, now don't fight yourself. This is what you're doing. Get towards the middle. Get this towards the middle. No. Take your hand back further. Put it back here. Now you've got more leverage. All right. That work a little better? That's better. All right. Now release it slow. Now take this hand and lift the cage up and down. Has it got a good traction? Yeah, it's got good. All right, now, you set this on top of that. That's the funnel. That's your funnel. That's the shaker. Don't bump this now with the package. Okay? If you bump this now and you don't have enough tension, oh, the, queen. the queen cage will fall down inside. Okay. okay. Now, did you shake this and give them a spray I inside? I haven't shaked. Not yet. Okay. You didn't spray them before? No. You should always spray them at least a little bit on each side. That calms them down really good. That's got uh, sugar water and a little lemon. Mary wanted excited bees. I did. <laughs> you wanted them excited. That seems to be getting them fired don't, up. Don't, don't get my husband going. I normally I don't good shake job, them or I don't job. spray them down, but I got to go. so I'm going to throw that over here. I do at least five. And you say, don't hit the box. You hit the box. No, don't hit the box. But see, right now you're putting bees in the air. Turn it at an angle. Hit one side, then the other. Drop it in front, Mary. Just drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Oh, I can't. Just drop it. There. Now get your feeder. Get your feeder. Put one corner on and then back and forth. Don't be real careful. Here, just put one corner on like this. And then back and forth. You notice how much more bees are sitting there than when I did it? Mm -hmm. I'll show you why. Now, everybody pay attention now. Here's the package. When you go to bump them, just bump it down like this. Instead of trying to shake them, hold it like this at an angle. Hit it, hit it this way back and forth about three times, and going downhill, 90% of the bees is out, and then drop out. See, but if you do this, you're walking back and forth, you put bees in the air. John, would you do that again? What? Whatever you, the, the shaking. When package, you put yeah. them in the package, bump them down this way first. Take that cl uh, closure off and then put them at a good 45. Hit them with the fist. Okay. Hit them this way. Okay. About three times. See how those bees are moving? Yeah. They're going yeah. downhill. Yeah. They're going to go right out the hole. Okay. Drop your cage. Okay. Once you put the feeder on, then walk around with your hive tool. Get the end and stick the, the vent end in the hole. Turn it around. Vent end in the hole. Just sit it. Set it in front of the hive. Okay, got now the next thing, back up. Let those bees settle down. Take your can over to another hive, and then take your uh, put it in an angle. Like so. Let me ask you. There's no. But is that just going to be poured into there? You're going to pour it right into here. Okay. So hit it at an angle. Make a V there. Never stick your fingers in there because it'll lay them open.
It looks easy, but each person's going to do it and say, that's a little harder than I thought it was. You got to get the technique down. Shake it and don't Mary, worry about putting the bees in. Go ahead. Ready? Pour it, pour it, pour it in. Yeah. Now when you go to pour it, don't shake it. See how the bees are coming up, they want to drink right away. Once you get to where it stops doing that, turn it from one side to the other. Roll it. No, like this. Hold on your hand. Turn this way. Now, see how it's draining? It. Turn it this way a little bit. Take it over to another spot and lay it sideways. Or stick it on top of another place. Don't turn it that way. You want to lay it, you want to lay it so that it's like this. See the hole? You want it up like this. Gotcha. Okay. That way the, the syrup is not going to get on the ground because if you... No, don't worry about them bees. Just close that lid up. Okay. Take your finger, just flick it out of the way. That bee thanks you, though. Hey, if you go around like this, you won't be a thing after a while. Bees in here. I know, roach. Now, you see the smoke? Watch the bees. See them starting to move? Mm hmm Yeah, they're going down. They're going down. If you do this, and I'm not going to do it, you blow any kind of embers in there, you're going to kill a queen. If it's a production queen, it's only $30, but if you buy breeder stock, $300 to $500. See, these was put in a few days ago. These go into minis. Right now, this hot, this spot, this frame right here. You see the, the honey in there? Come up yeah. close, you look at the honey. Yeah, I can see it glistening. See the glistening, the shininess? Oh, I do now. Mm, oh. Not yet. Not capped yet. It's it was? Oh yeah. You're yeah, looking I for do. the shininess. Yeah, I do. See, when you mention things, it'll jar my file cabinet. Now, you said you didn't see it. That brings the file up. No, no, Turn your shoulder. No, the sun over. Now, walk around over here. Walk around over here, we'll show you something. These are, these are the Chinese grafting needles. And there's probably, here's one here, I think. You don't have to buy anything. You know what this is? Paper clip. Paper, paper clip, yeah. If you pass it around and look at it, it's got a small little cup at the end of it. Oh, yeah. A cup? Yeah. Just flatten it out with a hammer. Oh, that's mm -hmm. hammer. A oh, oh, like a spoon. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. That's the tool, huh? That makes queens. Good. You can do grafting with about anything. Now, see, here is how you do your grafting. This is a frame. It's all scrap. There's three frames here, three slots. There's 15 cells goes on here. A person comes out here and they set this up like so. It goes this way. Can I get it back? Yeah, it goes this way. Middle one. It's got to go one way or the other. The other way. Yeah, right. It goes this way. way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think some of them put it up a little higher. You lay. Actually, here is this is what they did right here. You put a piece of tape there, and you see there's a little line. Well, there's a bar that goes. Here's a bar. And we don't have cells. You put your little cell cups here, and you got your frame up here that you're grafting from. And what you do is you put your finger here, and you take your grafting needle. You use this or magnifying glass. You can get one out. And you put it in that cell cup, then you index it up one point, see? You put 15 here, and then once you get all three done, then you put it in here. It should fit like this. That's the trouble. You've got nine different students building it, nine different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This, this one here is for a starting. Yeah, that one goes there. This is the one you usually start new students on because it's got two rows. Mm -hmm. You put 15 on there, then you turn it this way, and you walk right out here and you set it in. So if you've got 15 cells on there, the very least you're going to get is 15 times $5. No risk at all. You just sit here and graft it. Because another beekeeper buys the cells when they're uh, sealed up, and they might want to buy 100 of them. 
So $105. Oh my That's 500 bucks for four to five minutes. Yeah. Wow. I'm teaching you what nobody else wants to teach you because they're afraid that they're going to take the business away. Competition. Competition is good for everybody. So, so you're harvesting queen cells. Well, no. they are harvesting larvas, putting them in cups. Stephen's got all my stuff up there. Uh, a lot of stuff should be back here. These are for uh, priming cells. Uh, I, I make my own queen cells out of doll rods. They're mounted on a thing. And the one that I use students... Doll rods? What's a doll rod? A doll rod is a round, round peg like this. Okay. Come in different sizes. Okay. We use a 5 16 and we take a block of wood and we mount uh, three rows of five there, it's 15. So every time you dip the cells into your wax and then you dip it in the water, it cools them and then you just give them a quarter turn and they fall off. Huh. We usually keep a big peanut container full of them back there all the time. That's the first thing I teach students how to make the cells. And then we teach them how to mount them, then we teach them how to graph. And then once they put them in there, when they're ready, then we teach them how to put them into those mini boxes up there. So when you come to take a class, you learn how to make the cell, you learn how to graft into it, and you have to put the cell in out there. Then you come back and cage the queen, put her in a little cage that we've had. Right. Put her in there, and then you sell her. Okay, and how many times do you need to come to learn that? How long does it take most people to learn to ride a bicycle? Of the day. Then you practice, right? Yeah, you practice, yes. Okay. So, okay, yes, sir. <laughs> as long as it takes, right? Well, <laughs> yeah, the longer you do anything, it's like I can get 25 beekeepers out there and I can watch each one put a package in. Each one is going to be different. If I go out there, it's night and difference that you can see. You don't have to know anything about bees. You can see the difference. Mm -hmm. A beekeeper would pick up the little tricks here and there. See? Exactly. Yes. So what I'm doing is something that I've done for 65 years and I'm still, I'm not like I used to be. I'm, I teach more now. See when I was down there I could pop queens in and out and cage. Now Stephen's son, he started paying his boy uh, $10 a queen to catch him. He thought in his mind that boy is not going to go on real fast. Uh -huh. That boy was catching 40 of an hour. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Good for him. Way to go. Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm showing you the opportunity. Yeah. There's a lot of little doors in beekeeping. Mm -hmm. You go through this door and you want to sell honey. You go through this door and you want to teach. You go through this door and you want to make queens. Find out. There's people that come in here want five hives. They want to make lip balms. They want to make soaps. They want to do this and that. Find it what your niche is and pursue it. I'm just showing you the doors, giving you the opportunity, and you just have to make your mind up. Yeah. Beekeeping's not for everybody. You know, this is a good day. You make a living at this, and it's raining outside. What are you going to say? It's raining? Mm -hmm. I work out here where there's rain sleep, right, and except lightning, I come in the house, or she'll come in and get me. <laughs> you have, and anybody can make a queen under most conditions. I don't care who it is. Make a living at it, you have to be consistent in the spring, summer, fall. Right? Okay. But, like paying 